Hey guys, this is Women's Grandmaster Sabina Feuscher. I would like to welcome you to my new YouTube channel, 15 minutes or less day-to-day -day chess games analysis, where I'm hoping to be able to analyze a game every single day, choosing from my own games or some of top players' games, and provide you with some good insight on opening ideas, middle game plans, end game techniques, and many more. For the first video, I have chosen to show you one of my own games that I won in 2007 against Grandmaster Arahamia Grand Ketevan, a very strong chess player, originally from Georgia, but who has been playing for Scotland for a really long time. Uh, I played this game at the European Women's Chess Championship in 2007. The start was very bad for me. So I was really happy to come back with a victory in this round nine of the tournament. And following this, I actually um, ended up beating some other strong players and qualifying for the World Women's Chess Championship. I started this game with D4, my regular starting move. Knight f6, c4, c5, d5, g6. My opponent opted for the Benoni. Uh, in this position, b5 is another possibility, uh, which is called the Go Volga or Banco Gambit. But my opponent chose the, the Benoni, knight c3, d6, knight f3, bishop g7. So far, these are natural moves that uh, you'd see played often. And here, the most natural move for white is probably e4, putting another pawn in the center, controlling, um, uh, improving um, its, its uh, d5 square and pawn, uh, opening up the bishop to be developed on e2 or d3. And, of course, uh, keeping the possibility of eventually playing an e5. But in this game, I did not choose to play e4. Actually, I chose a move that many of you might think it's strange. I play knight d2. Um, this is a typical move for this kind of Benonis. It's a um, preventive move and somewhat um, getting ready for when black is going to play e6 and capturing d5. I'm going to capture with the c pawn, leaving the c4 square free for my knight to come to c4, put pressure on d6, which is going to remain a weak pawn. So this is the idea of this move. Not at all natural. Um, if you are starting to play chess, I don't recommend you to make such moves unless you know why you're doing them. Of course, please keep developing your pieces and strengthening your center. Uh, and only then um, try to improve the position of your pieces. Uh, 92 is also known for for avoiding bishop g4 pins, for example, had I played e4 in this position, in this position, uh, my opponent uh, could have played maybe bishop g4 and um, trade trade this bishop from c8, which uh, is Black's good bishop, but uh, given his lack of space, it is good to to trade um, a piece. So 92 is avoiding all that, but of course it's closing um, the the action of this bishop and its development to f4, g5, or e3, or whatever you know I might choose to to take it out, and it's just moving another piece one more time. Castle e4. Finally, you know I'm controlling the center, and here the normal move would be e6, as I mentioned to you earlier. And uh, after bishop e2, e takes d5, c takes d5, possibly rook e8, um, castle. And my idea here is to play a4, make sure I defend this pawn either with bishop f3 or f3, and then put my knight in f4, bring my sorry, in c4, take my bishop out to f4, put pressure in d6, stop black from any kind of counterattack with a6, b5, and uh, eventually push on e5. These, these are the main ideas in the Benoni for white. 
So uh, my opponent, very interestingly, didn't play e6. She chose to use the fact that I moved the knight in d2 and played e5. This move is um, kind of using the fact that my knight is in d2 and doesn't give me any opportunity of improving the position of my knight. But it has some downsides. And the downsides of this e5 move is that it closes the bishop in g7. So now black is not going to open up the center anymore. Um, and um, this bishop in g7 will remain closed. Now there are two plans for black and why this e5 could still be all right. One of the plans is to play a6, b5, play on the queen side. Another plan is move the knight and then play f5 and try to start an attack on the king side when white is going to castle short. So I um, decided to finish up my development, bishop e2. And here my opponent played knight e8, clearly stating, well, maybe not that clearly, but having two in mind to play f5, and uh, maybe also bring this knight to c7 to help the push of b5. But mostly the main idea is to play f5. So I decided to look at this position as something good for me um, and use the fact that my queen or bishop are on this diagonal uh, controlling h5 and I've decided to use the fact that the knight is in d2 and um, is allowing my bishop and queen to be opened and played h4. So here we see some little positive side of having the knight in d2 um, also, not only that c4 idea uh, when uh, black would play e6, but also having this um, h4, h5 idea opening up the h file and starting the attack on the king side. And uh, normally, when you are being attacked, keep in mind you don't want to start playing on the side that you are being attacked and where your opponent is going to to open up the position. Um, to your king. What you want to do is try to break through the center or on the other side of the board to move the attack from your king to another side of the board. Now, of course, in this position, the center is blocked, so uh, the only way black could try to move the play from the king side would be to play um, a6 and if h5, h5 knight to c7, uh, getting ready to play b5. But my opponent um, surprisingly played f5 in this position. I am very sorry. Uh, in uh, After bishop e2, h5, she played f5. And um, opened up the position on the king side. So I went for h5. This was my idea, h5, so I went for it. I'm not worried if black is going to capture an e4 because I'm just going to capture back with my knight and have a very strong outpost in e4, maintaining this pawn in e5, closing the bishop in g7. So I'm not worried about that. After h5, my opponent took in h5. I was very shocked by this move because Okay, it is quite clear I'm going to capture in g6 and open the h file, but why help me and uh, open the g file as well and give me the possibility to eventually play a g4 and open up everything? Uh, the best move for black would have been knight f6, coming back with the knight towards the defense of h7. Now if I take in g6, pawn takes g6, the knight and the bishop are protecting the king, so it's going to take me some time to start out any attack. Probably I would play knight f3, bring my bishop to g5, but black has some time to play a6, uh, bishop d7, b5. So g takes h5 was, was kind of strange. Bishop takes h5, knight f6, okay, now the knight is coming back, but um, my, the, the king has been weakened a little bit more. Bishop f3, of course, I do not want to give my white color bishop. a6. Now, remember, 
if you're starting to play on one side, make sure you are blocking the position on that one side that you open before you start on playing on the other side. Especially if, if the side you have to block is, is um, close to your king. F4 was really necessary here in this position to make me um, make another move with this knight in d2, play knight f1, and now a6, start the, the counterattack on the uh, queen side, and if g3, okay, takes bishop d7. I could have bishop g5, uh, but um, b5 um, is, is getting ready to start the counterattack on the queen side. My opponent, however, did not block there, played a6 directly, and the problem with this move is that now after capture, bishop takes f5, knight e4, I have blocked uh, her pawn in e5, this bishop remained closed, I have gotten rid of my knight from d2, which was closing up my uh, bishop, and now I have a very easy plan to start attacking her king. b5, g4, tempo, every move that you can do with tempo, do it. g5, knight takes e4, bishop takes e4. I'm happy with that trade. I'm going to, if I'm going to trade this uh, uh, bishop g in g6 as well, it means that black's king is going to be even more weak. Queen e8, trying to bring another piece um, in case of a trade, of course, capturing with the queen and having more or less a safe safe position. But no, queen g4. Every time you're attacking, make sure you're bringing another piece to attack. Don't just go with one or two pieces. Bring all of your pieces. And the queen is the most important, so make sure you bring that. b takes c4. Here it looks like rook f4 would have been a winning, not winning, but some interesting idea for black, but it doesn't work because, uh, not because of bishop f4, uh, pawn takes f4, because now, you know, it looks like my king is is in the center, these pieces are, are hanging, but um, after rook f4, bishop takes g6. And now, if queen takes g6, just bishop takes f4, pawn takes f4, and queen e6. I'm trading the queens, I have an exchange up, and a winning position. So rook f4 wouldn't have done anything. So my opponent went for, for the pawn, opening the b-file, getting ready for when I'm going to cast along. Bishop e3, now I can finish my development. And here she blunders, she played knight d7. And we're going to see why that is a blunder, but rook a7 had to be played to bring a piece, another piece, towards the defense of the king. And remember ideas like this, bringing a rook from the other side of the board, defending the king is definitely um, an important idea. I probably would have castled and, and still had a good attack, doubling on the h-file, but it would have taken me some time to actually um, prove my advantage. But after knight d7, the reason this is a blunder is that I capture in g6, and now black is forced to capture with the h-pawn, of course, that the queen cannot capture because the knight in d7 is hanging. So pawn takes g6, knight e4 going for the weakness in d6, queen e7 force move and here very beautiful queen e6 check, exchanging the queens, eliminating the defense of the d6 pawn, black is forced to play d5 and now another very good move, pawn takes d7. And after pawn takes e4, just take a look of, at black structure. He has six pawns and each of them is an island. Each of them. Um, you do not want to get such kind of a position. Uh, it's very, very bad for black. So I castled here. And here from this position I'm strategically uh, winning. And it's just a matter of technique how I finish the game. I doubled on the d file, made sure that my pawn in d7 is well protected, and now I brought my king to capture her weak pawns. Rook d2, bishop e7, now I can capture in c5, check, bishop g6, um, winning the rook, doubling, and okay, now I have an exchange up. So I'm just going to play this game until the end some more moves, and that's it. Here my opponent resigned. 
Um, I really hope you have enjoyed my attacking game and I'm looking forward to hearing your comments and feedback on my videos and stay tuned for another day tomorrow.